Hey everybody, Ed Lemberger here with uh, some more metaphysical musing. And this one is going to be, uh, well the title of the video is Coronavirus Resolution, 10 Philosophical Questions. And uh, I'm going to try to put my mind at ease, whether your mind is at ease or not, that's up to you. Because I've got this statement, it's your mind, make sure it's you that's using it. And stated in the first person, when I look at myself in the mirror, I go, it's my mind. I must make sure I'm using it. So anything you hear from me, I'm not a medical professional or anything like that. So this is just all for entertainment purposes. And uh, whatever you hear from me or from anybody, I mean, do I know what I'm talking about? Does anybody really know what they're talking about? Does anybody really care? But anyway, um... You've got to put everything through your own intelligence filters. I'm not recommending anything. I'm just sharing things as I think them, as I believe them, as I see them. Okay. So I've got, I came up with these 10 questions that I want to ask myself to see if I can quell some of this uh, fear of this coronavirus. I mean, I don't really have any fear over it myself anyway, but, uh, excuse me, maybe I can uh, quell my fears even further after I ask these questions and come up with uh, answers that come from within my inner, the inner workings of my mind. Question number one, what is the role in nature of a virus? Well, you know, one time, it was about 14, 15 years ago, I was doing a deep meditation and I wasn't thinking of anything in particular during this meditation. I was just, sometimes I do a contemplative meditation where I, I put an idea out there and then I go into meditation and see what um, the inner workings of mind tell me about that particular situation. This time I wasn't. I was just doing deep meditation. All of a sudden something flashed into my mind and that uh, it's a revelation for me. I'm sure other people are saying, that's no re revelation. I knew that all along anyway. Um, so all this stuff, we really know this stuff deep down inside. There's a lot we know collectively. And uh, a lot of things that we know collectively, we don't even pay attention to it, and we do something that's opposite of what we know is best for us. So I don't want to be in that camp right now. But uh, what is the role and nature of a virus? Well, in this meditation, it said it's to serve. That all life is here to serve. All life serves other life. And that there is a flow hierarchy in service. And that the service flow hierarchy is related to uh, how much access to consciousness that any one particular life form has. And lucky for we humans on this planet, um, we possess the greatest degree of access to consciousness of any other life form on this planet. So everything here in this flow hierarchy is to serve. The lower life forms, they serve us, and we in turn serve humanity as a whole. You could say we serve nature as a whole. We serve God. And the whole thing operates in a circle, an ashes to ashes, dust to dust circle. So, what is the role in nature of a virus? It is to serve. Now keep that question and answer in mind as I ask the next question. Are viruses predators that are on a seek and destroy humans mission? Or are they performing a service within holistic harmony? So I say they are performing a service. Now, whether the service they perform, whether you look at it as destructive or constructive, depends on the mindset you use to give them the messages on what to 
do with their service, how to serve any one individual. So, um, I don't believe viruses are predators, okay? And here's what I believed about the whole thing, that even the flu virus, when people, we get the flu shot, and around this part of the world, um, I live in Wisconsin, so um, viruses generally come, the flu virus, and they tell you to get the shot and all that stuff. I don't get any shots uh, myself, so um, just you know where I stand on that. But um, the flu comes in the fall and in the spring. Now, I consider these little viruses migrant workers, that they come in in the fall and it, and the immune system of the human being lets them in and they're here to do a service and the service that they're doing is for deep cleaning in the cells because all life forms feed off of other life forms so we're all in this food chain operation thing too that's going on so and any person once they let a virus in it's in the fall the virus comes in to do deep cleaning in the cells and nature set it up this way so that human being could start with a clean slate of their body would be cleaned out so they could make it through the winters the winter is a tough time for a lot of uh, people especially like years ago and everything when they didn't really have heat I mean so the the virus comes in deep cleans all the cells so they're stronger to make it through the winter now uh, different um, viruses cause problems in people people get very ill and the reason they get very ill is because there's too much to clean in that person the person is too autotoxic and there's so much to clean in that person that the virus has to replicate too many times and the virus takes up too much of the energy of the human body and at that point um, it can be a problem because um, if the the body as a whole might not be able to hold that many viruses and it takes it down and just like a battery it kind of uh, takes it could even take down a person into expiration which a lot of ha happens to a lot of people because the virus has to replicate too many times now one of the advantages we have here in this uh, society as we have it now is we have so much food to eat and we're eating so much food that we carry so much uh, extra weight in our bodies and extra and we start to build up a lot of toxins in our bodies so when these viruses come in they've got a lot to eat they have to replicate so many times and uh, they replicate enough to make us really sick sometimes and it happens again in the spring where there's spring cleaning going on the viruses come through again they're migrant workers they're traveling the world they're traveling the planet all the time looking for a job and uh, then they come in and do their job and they clean and if there's too much to clean then um, there's the the host can have some problems you know uh, harboring that many little uh, viruses for that many for that short of a time now there's another thing that happens and uh, within I'd say let's call this metaphysical there's laws of mind here so these viruses are coming in as migrant workers they're cleaning and then the laws of mind kick in so what instructions do these little um, workers that that the human body is hired what instructions do they take to go about their the business to doing their job well they read the vibrations of the human being and uh, just like people who have dogs, you know that um, you can use your mind to let the dog know exactly how you want to be treated and how the dog should treat other people around you. You know, it's your mind that's doing it. So our minds, believe it or not, this is what came to me in deep meditation. We tell these little cleaning organisms what to do we give them the instructions we're like the foreman okay here here's your job do it okay and if we give instructions that are filled with fear because we're afraid that we're going to be taken down by this virus or if we don't feel good enough self-esteem for ourselves if we harbor any self self resentment or anything like that or fear type based 
uh, thoughts, these viruses read those fear thoughts and they say, oh, okay, you want to be in fear? Well, then we'll, that's what we'll do. You know, we got the job description and we got the instructions from the foreman and they said mess things up and we go about the, the uh, business of messing things up. Well, the over-solo nature always takes care of everything. So eventually they're going to leave, you know, unless the person gets into too weakened of a condition, which happens to a lot of people every year, then the result is a little bit different. So, um, so we are the, our mind is the directive mind for that's directing the laws of nature and directing these little life forms, uh, they do our bidding based on the instructions that we give them. Question number three, is fear a fuel that feeds a virus? Well, with what I just said, fuel, fear would um, not necessarily be a fuel but it would be a uh, direction, it would be instructions. So if we're in fear and we don't feel so good about ourselves and we don't feel we measure up to other people, then the virus would come in and do their best to obey the vibrations that we already have. And if we start working about our, on ourselves with absolute self-worth, just knowing that we have absolute self-worth because we're created and sustained by the same principle, the same power that creates and sustains every life form, and that we're wanted here because just because the creative force, whatever it is, wants us here, otherwise we wouldn't be here, and we start to claim self-worth and hold self-worth, then these little viruses go about the business of doing cleaning, and they even clean up after themselves as they leave. And they don't do anything to harm us, but they do everything to help us to fulfill the vibrational instructions that we give them. Question number four. Do humans possess dominion over viruses? I'm going to ask uh, the next two questions along with this one. Is there even such a thing as dominion? And if so, how would a person use dominion to either become ill or stay well? Excuse me. Well, uh, Dominion flashed into my mind during a meditation. I wasn't thinking about it, but it, it came in. And this idea of service, everything is here to serve. And um, we've got an entire microbiosystem of billions of support organisms. And what it told me, too, is, I mean, we've got uh, who knows how many species of bacteria we have in our body. And all of them aren't the same for each person too. Each person harbors their own mix of of bacterias, fungi, molds, viruses. Yes, I think we have probably each person might have 10,000 species of viruses right within themselves right now that are doing work that we don't even know about because uh, because one of the migrant worker forms of them hasn't come through and really uh, made us ill. These support microorganisms are here. We couldn't digest our food if we didn't have these support microorganisms. There's a billion chemical reactions and biological reactions going on with every breath we take. And it's all orchestrated by the oversoul laws of nature. And on an individual basis, the oversoul is moved uh, in and out. And uh, it's a little bit of plastic, depends it's got a plasticity or a, a watery type of way of going about things. By when we combine our individual consciousness and our directions, our vibrational directions, combined with the oversoul of nature directions. 
You know, and there is in uh, some of the New Thought metaphysics uh, the idea that if a person could just stop all of their conscious thinking altogether for a while and keep it there where there is no thought, maybe that's one of the benefits of meditation, that the body, the over-soul energy of nature would just put the body right back into holistic health harmony. And that because if we're in a diseased condition at all, it's because we're out of tune, because our too many thoughts of lack of self-worth and too many fear thoughts and everything came together to uh, p- to put us into disharmony with the symbiotic harmony of the laws of nature as it would pertain to harmony. Okay, so human beings, this idea of dominion, everything is here to serve. And lucky for us, we're at the top of this dominion hierarchy. Every other life form is here to serve us. So if we look at what we're getting, uh, as far as service, we look at our own health harmony and we examine it, and then we make some adjustments to what we're telling the rest of the life forms that here that are our support organisms, what are we telling them to do? And what are we giving them to serve us with? You know, what type of instructions are we giving them based on not the talking English to them, but on our feelings and our vibrational nature? They understand telepathy. They understand clairvoyance. They understand only thought. Okay. Now, some people don't think thinking is that important, but as I was reminded by by my buddy Thomas Troward, he's not really my buddy, but he's wrote this in like 100 years ago, over 100 years ago. If I want to go to New York, the first step in that direction is by my mind, using my mind to go in that direction. Nothing happens unless directed by mind. And there is an oversoul mind in nature that is putting everything into harmony. And on an individual basis, we do it. It's up to each one of us to think our own thoughts. You can't think my thoughts and I can't think your thoughts. But you could think my thoughts if I somehow convinced you to think my thoughts. But my thoughts might not be the best thing for you. That's why you've got to seek your own counsel and think your own thoughts. You've got to evaluate your own health harmony condition and say, okay, how did I get myself to this point and how can I make the adjustments that are going to put me back into holistic health harmony? So we have dominion. We can do it. And now it's how do we use it? Am I using this principle, this law of mind, to stay well? Or am I, am I using this principle of mind to put myself out of harmony and into the dis-ease uh, place, you know? Question seven. Why do some humans never contract a virus when exposed, even when exposed to a virus? Well... Um, going along with the same train of thought, some humans, uh, if a person's thinking pretty highly of themselves, um, they could have that virus. So there's some people that test positive for this coronavirus, they don't even know they have it. And these people, maybe they're more at ease with themselves. You know, they, we, we don't really know what's inside of them as far as their, their inner thought process and how, um, uh, and the evolution of the thought process they came from. You know, uh, the nuclear family that they came from and everything. We don't know all that stuff, okay? But no matter what, every human can change their thinking into affirmative thinking, understanding that the universe is for them and the universe is for each one of us. The laws of nature here are supporting us all. And let's allow the laws of nature to support us in an affirmative way by giving us absolute health harmony because we're feeling absolute self-worth about ourselves. So some people never contract the virus, even when exposed, because the virus doesn't have a job. 
the virus comes in, f- files an op- application, and, oh, this person, well, we don't have a job here because there's nothing for us to do. Question number eight, why do some humans become infected and heal from a viral infection in short order while other humans become deathly ill from the same virus? Well, I think, you know, if we follow the same train of thought, if you've been with this video this long and you're uh, following this train of thought, it's, you know, you know why, because number one, lack of self-worth in the individual, number two, because they've allowed themselves to carry too many toxic uh, waste material matter in their bodies and cells by who knows why, by eating too much, eating the wrong foods, smoking cigarettes, you know, drinking too much alcohol or all kinds of vices, you know, not keeping themselves clean. Um, so then there's too much to clean up. The virus comes in to do its job. It's coming in really because it's, it's, you know, it's hired to do a job. It's coming in to eat all this toxins out of your body. It has to replicate too many times replicates so many times that uh, it takes the energy of the body down and the body could even expire, you know. If a person feels good about themselves, they start making better decisions, they, uh, you know, they eat better, drink cleaner water, breathe cleaner air, everything, all of a sudden there's not as much to clean, a virus can come in, you might get ill for a little while, but it's going to be nothing because as these migrant workers go on their business, Going on to the next person, um, they they don't mess up the place much at all. You might get a little bit ill for a bit, and then you're over it, done. Question number nine: Do hidden underlying currents of fear play any role in who gets sick and who stays well from exposure to viruses? Well, I think we've got the answer to that question. Underlying currents of fear do play a role. And uh, when we can resolve our fears and move them into harmonious vibration, understanding that we're absolutely worthy to receive every blessing that there is to get in this lifetime, and that it's ours for the taking, it's ours for the thinking, and it's ours for the manifesting, then we feel this health harmony. And... uh, we eliminate the underlying currents of fear and we start to step by step grow health harmony. And question number 10, are you now in a strengthened position to stay well just by putting some contemplative thought to these questions? Well, that's up to you. How is your thinking, feeling nature right now? Mine is feeling good. I mean, just speaking this stuff has helped clear up anything that might, any type of uh, toxic debris that I might have had in my mind. I'm feeling better. I'm feeling better about myself. You should feel good about yourself too. And uh, look, whatever the rest of the world does, how much fear they want to ramp up in themselves, be an observer. Well, that's, I shouldn't even say be an observer because that's me telling you what to do. I'm an observer. I observe and I observe the whole world sometimes going crazy, but I'm like the uh, play-by-play announcer at a baseball game or a football game, you know, or a basketball game. And I'm just describing what's going on on the court or on the field. And I try to not to put myself in it, be an observer, not an attacher. And of course, I'm Ed Lemberger. This is uh, Metaphysical Musing, and what did I title this video? Coronavirus Resolution, 10 Philosophical Questions. And uh, thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing, thank you for sharing my video, and uh, thank you for coming back for future episodes of Uh, personal empowerment, spiritual empowerment. Good day.